him naked. Shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. hear me as we get ready to do the show here just checking my, my stuff here make sure i got everything working checking myself all right so we're gonna light a candle like we always do giving thanks Preparing ourselves for the show, preparing to talk. Thank you, ancestors, for trailblazing the path. Giving thanks, giving thanks to all our friends, sending prayers out to everybody who's not well. You know, sending um, prayers to all the people who are in need right now. Giving thanks to everybody. I have great spirit to. Bless us all to take care of us all, pray for us, take care of us, and uh, lead us in the right direction as we move on this journey called life. So I light this candle, just giving thanks and recognition to all the folks who, you know, lived and lived and gave their life and did what they did the best they could in that moment they could. So this is for you. Okay, we're going to light a little bit of Palo Santo, too. Yeah, this is good stuff. If you're not using it. Well, today's a kind of adventurous day, you know. We uh, in the squaltering heat today. My capacitor went out on my on my AC, and my buddy's coming over to change it out for me. He's a good guy. Appreciate him. He's always there when I need him, and I call him. He um, helps my family out. He's been doing that for years uh, since we've owned the restaurant. So, you know, everybody's busy right now, but um. Just kind of wanted to check in with everybody, see how everybody's doing. We're winding down. The month is almost over. We're getting to that place where um, we're getting ready to move into a uh, later part of summer now. We're in, going into August. Wow. <clears throat> Who knew how fast we would be going into this uh, this rapid uh, acceleration of summertime where the days are getting shorter again. So here we go. And we're getting to that moment where we just kind of enjoying the summer as we get it for me summer kind of ends on august 1st it's kind of when i get back in the groove of things with my soccer coaching and you know more drumming events and just kind of make i have to make fun while i'm working because if you don't it's kind of crazy so i'm here just kind of wanted to check in i wanted to talk and just kind of you know the topic today is the transition um, for you, those of you who are listening or listen to some of my shows, I talk about how, uh, humanity is changing and evolving and how the paradigms are shifting and the constructs are moving away from things that we're used to and comfortable with. But, um, we're moving into a place where, you know, things are just not, not the same anymore. Um, just want to let you know, guys know that this show is brought to you by with Insights Radio, they're our hosts. They're the ones who broadcast our radio through uh, Anchor and through Sprecher and through Apple and all the different networks and all the things that are free. And on my YouTube channel, you can subscribe, look up Iggy Garcia, and it's good to be here. That's my channel. It's good to be here. So that one is where all these episodes are loaded. So 
if you want to subscribe to my show, that's a good way to do and keep in contact with. So moving along. So we're going to be uh, hitting some topics and some things that maybe will trigger you. So or maybe some things you agree with, maybe you won't. So just thought I'd let you know because um, these kind of shows can get that way sometimes and not trying to cause problems, not trying to cause, uh, you know, division or animosity or stuff. But, you know, we're coming to a place now where we have, you know, things are being disclosed in ways that would never been disclosed before. Now we have the media disclosing uh, UFOs, unidentified flying objects. And then they actually have like, they're, they're saying that they actually have alien bodies and stuff. So the transition is happening. The, the time of our humanity is transitioning and changing, you know, as people are challenging the constructs of government constructs of religion, the constructs of their families and just the constructs that were put there for us. Where will that lead us? I'm not sure. I can't really tell you where that will lead us, where we will end up and where will we go. It's kind of hard to say, you know, because humanity has gone through these kind of things before. And sometimes they are a success and something not, you know, in no matter how you look at it, somebody always ends up on the wrong side of the, of the coin, right? They're either pro or, or con to the system that they want to do. But you know when I when I'm when I wanted to talk about this transitioning is just the whole transition of this world. Just everybody in these eight billion people who are here on this planet who are who want a different and they want change. Now there are some people who don't want change. There are people who want to keep the system the same. There are people who benefit from the system being the same because if you change it, then they lose power. And when they lose power, what happens? They try to gain it back. And it's not always the right way in the right form. And so when we look at ourselves as human beings on this planet, as we should, we look at ourselves uh, mostly, you know, categorized into different groups of people. Some of us are Spanish. Some of us are black, white, you name it. You know, we, we start to label ourselves and we start put ourselves, pigeonhole ourselves into these categories. And then we have these other group of people who have no category. They don't belong to any particular group. They are, they are in their own personal right themselves, you know, our human existence. They're autonomous in the sense. But, you know, the world is starting to go and it's starting to phase in a direction where it has never gone before. And I really, truly believe this. And I've heard this from other people, too, where it's not just individual people. It's the whole planet. The whole planet is is shifting out of this uh, parochial type uh, grasping clamps of on the hands type of world. The world now that we know is much different from the world that we grew up in. Is that is that a true statement in any in any lifetime in any group any person who's you know gone from child to adult that the world has changed? But I really believe that the world is actually moving into this, this, um, this, you know, change, like it's, it's dimensionally changing, like going into this, into this new version of itself. I mean, I know that people can do that in individually and they can, you know, raise the higher conscience of themselves. But I think we're raising the conscious in a way that we're not even aware we're doing it, you know, because I, I, I listen to people now and then people are going, you know, everything feels weird. Everything feels different. I just feel disconnected or I feel like, you know, some of us would call it ascension, uh, uh, awakening or whatever you want to call it. But I think it goes deeper than that. I think it goes, it goes deeper than that because we're starting to awaken in ways that the whole planet is shifting into a new dimensional shift, a new existence where we weren't before. And it's going to cause a lot of stress. And it's going to cause a lot of disruption and a lot of feelings and, and all these different things that we usually don't feel. And I think right now what's happening is just people are just feeling it, but they can't describe it. They can't explain it. And, you know, it used to be that the ascension process was an individual uh, thing that happened to certain people and things that things that happened to people who were going through stuff. And now I think the world is completely the world. I mean, the mother earth is ascending. She's ascending. She's actually moving into a new phase of existence, you know, on top of what we've created in our you know, collective consciousness on this planet. We also, the mother earth is going through her, her evolution too. 
Uh, we see it and don't see it. We don't notice because sometimes we're like the little ant, right? We don't feel, we don't see some things because we're just it's so vast and big. You know, ant really can't see us because it's it lives on a different plane of existence compared to our plane of existence. So there's other things happening around us that we can't explain. You know, we call it thunder, lightning, storm, uh, unexplained weather patterns. We call it uh, whatever you want to call it. You know, what was that? You know, sometimes we say that. You know, did you hear that? You know, the planes of existence are, are like crashing and molding, you know, into each other to the point where they're just not the same. You know, once we all came out of that pandemic, uh, you know, whatever you want to call that, because that was like one of the hardest things for a lot of people to go through, to actually be uh, locked into a position where they could move or go. And I know I've run into people where they just loved it. They just thought it was great. And, you know, that's fine. I neither loved it or hated it. It was what we had to do in order to, you know, believe that we had to survive. You know, who, who's really to prove that it would, it would or wouldn't. But regardless, we, can, we connected and we made a shift. We made a transition in that moment. Those two, three years, whatever long you want to call it, we made a, we made a transitional shift energetically from where we were to where we are now to the point is where we don't even really recognize who who we are to some degree. You know, sometimes we wake up and we're like, man, who am I? What am I doing? What's going on? You know, because we are going through these energetic shifts right now. The universe is expanding and it never stops expanding. It keeps expanding, keeps growing and it's going through its transition and we're caught in the wake of its transition. But the one thing we need to do is, you know, Regardless of what we're at, we're still on the planet. So it's not like we're going to fall off the planet or anything like that. But we're moving through this transitional period where we're just, we can't explain certain things of what's happening. We just can't. Because we don't have the cognitive ability, we don't have the resources, or we don't have the information in front of us. But we can feel it. But we can feel in our bodies. I know I can feel it. And I know that some of you guys can feel it because I've talked to some of you. And those of you who are online, you want to you want to chime in and just give me your thoughts. There's something happening. There's something going on, and you know, and it's not what we think it is. It's completely different. It's a new energy. It's a new love. It's a new source. It's a new. It's a new creation. A new transition of who we think we are. You know, we see ourselves with you know two legs, you know two arms, two hands you know, five fingers on each hand, you know, five toes on each foot. But I'm talking about we're more, we're going to a more deeper state of who we are. You know, the kids today, when you look at the kids today, the millennials today and the younger kids were coming in, their outlook on life is completely different than, you know, my generation. My generation had no, no computers. I mean, we had computers, but we didn't have computers. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have access to that. That wasn't part of the game. Part of the game for us was TV and radio and whatever music we bought and whatever books we read and wherever we wanted to go and hang out and play. But we weren't locked away. We weren't systematically put into systems where we had to logically think and create problem solve in the sense of computing. Our problem solving was a lot different. It was very interactive, very, uh, very simple, very different. So right now, our children today and my grandchildren, they're connected in ways that I, you can't even explain. You can't explain it because it's hard to, it's hard to explain something that you're not part of. You're part of it, but you're not part of it. You know what I'm saying? You're part of it, but you're not part of it. You're, you're in the system, but you're not part of that system. You are being indoctrinated into the system because you have to learn to be in that system because if you don't learn how to do it, you you can't work you can't survive you know this illusion that we have to we, we want to be separate from it and apart from it yeah you can be a separate apart from it but you're going to be in a situation where you're not going to be able to benefit or reap those things i believe that you deserve because the system is always changing and it's always uh, evolving and so our kids are being taught how to push and crunch numbers and how to active actively seek things that you know, we had to explore to find. All they had to do is do a search, Google it. You know, everybody says, Google it, you know, Google it. 
You know, everybody Googles it and they can find the answers. No, we had sometimes we had to go to the library and we had to research. And we had to go look up newspaper clippings. We had to, there was no, there was no Google it. The way we approach life, yeah, and we've advanced a lot from then, but we are changing as a species. We are evolving as a species of people. You look now, we have more autistic children. We have more starch seed children. We have the indigos. We have all the crystal children. We have all these different groups of children who have come into this world, and they all have their part, and they all participate and do what they're supposed to do. And I find it really fascinating that as we move through life right now, that life has kind of been tailored to the ease a little bit. It's a little easy. You know, those of us who have phones, we're pretty fortunate. We're pretty lucky that we have a phone. We're pretty fortunate that we have a TV. We're pretty fortunate that we have this laptop, you know, to be able to produce this microphone. There are still people on this planet who don't have these kind of tools, who are not able to communicate, not able to share the information that they want to share or be part of. Why is that? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why that is. It's because te technology advances, you know, when you, and when technology advances, you have to ask yourself, how's it advancing? How's this transitioning? How's this transitioning happening? How's this coming about? You know, are we smarter than we were 10 years ago? What has changed? What, what has changed? Well, the thing has changed, what's changed is our interaction with things. You know, as the computer evolves, you know, because someone's mind and their imagination creates the evolution of this computer, it makes it bigger and better. And then, you know, what happens next is, you know, we're, we're freed up to do things more differently. We're able to do things a little more simpler. You know, our lives are actually somewhat more simple to some degree when we need to search for answers, you know, when we don't have the answers, you know, instead of just typing it through, I guess speaking it and getting it, there's much, not much difference, but this transition of humanity is happening. I, I'm seeing it where people are, are, you know, questioning their own sexuality, questioning their own genders and stuff. Um, but you know, it, it's one of those things where, you know, you have to kind of look at it and go, what's really happening? What's going on? Why would these people put themselves in a situation or label themselves this way? What are they actually feeling? Are we, are we energetically, are we really more energy, more energy than we are physical? Sometimes I wonder, you know, our physical body has limitations, of course, because it can only do certain things compared to our spiritual body. Our spiritual body can, you know, travel the galaxy in the universe. But our physical body takes a, it takes a toll for that because as we travel, it sits and waits. And, you know, sometimes we are, you know, away from it and separate from it. But there are two temples that have to work, you know, very good. Our bodies need to be nourished in a way that is important. And I'm working on that, as some of you are. So can it be in alignment with our spirituality, our spiritual body, our religious body, whatever you want to call it. Because when, if you're not well, you could be, have the most best intentions and want to do the best things. But if you're not physically able to do, it makes it harder. And I see that people are starting to move into this new era of energy, this new era of thinking, this new era of feeling and emotion and love. It's completely different, but it's, but it's kind of, but it's kind of, um, but it's not like the old, you know, hippies, you know, love fast type. It's it's different. It's a love, but it's like with health limits and boundaries to some extent. But I'm 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 just seeing these different things that are happening around me. I'm seeing a lot of growth in things. You know, I did a drum circle uh, just a few days ago in the Lancaster Hall, and I was doing it in the in the next Columbus, and it's this place holds at least three, 400 people. And, but there was a hundred and some kids with their grandparents and parents there. And I was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. This is the future. I'm looking around going, this is the future. These are the future leaders. These are the future parents. These are the future taxpayers. These are the future people. And here we are. Here's an opportunity for me to share with them a little bit of what I do. 
I get to share with them a little bit of things that I'm able to do. I get to share with them something outside of their comfort zone, something that they're probably not even used to or see. And as I'm sitting there, you know, my friend Kate is going, you know, this is like controlled chaos because it seems like very chaotic at times when we were working with the kids because she was there with me helping me. And, you know, it was just the ebb and flow of how these kids worked. And I had a whistle which is my samba whistle, and I would blow it when I needed to get attention. And I think their conditioning from being at the swimming pool is one thing. That that's why they were able to, you know, move through the, the energy with the whistle. But as I sat there, I saw these little, all these little hope in the world, all these little kids, you know, from, you know, black, white, Asian, didn't matter. They were all, they were all in that group, you know, different levels of economic, social economic groups. And, you know, I sat there, I'm going, you can almost see where they come from to some degree. And then you can also say, I can see the potential in their growth, the things that they can do when they set their mind to it. And I also saw how easy it was to say, you know, this is what we have to do and how easy they fall into line. You know, so it's kind of interesting how when we're we're young, there are other people who are dictating how we should behave and how we should act in order to keep the ship steady and not to cause problems and to be able to move through the energy we need to move through. But I was really uh, fascinated by how we, we all drummed together and we were all in unison together and sharing the energy. And a lot of these kids had never drummed before. And I could see the ones that didn't have a drum or they just had a shaker because, you, you know, with a hundred and some kids, I don't have a hundred drums. I have a lot of drums, but not a hundred. But I got to see some kids, how they how they interact when they are lacking something in their life. How they feel when they need to reach out. And how they were able to share. And, you know, they were all, but they all had fun because I checked in with them. You guys having fun? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and they were having fun. And that's that was important to me. That was important that they were having fun. Because if they're not having fun, then that means I'm not getting to them. I'm not, I'm not reaching them. But this is where the transition is where, because I've never seen this before. Like, I've never seen this kind of stuff. Two weeks ago, I was at a festival and I was working there drumming. And there was this little girl. No, I'm just going to keep her name anonymous. But she was drumming and she was learning all the songs that I was teaching her and she was doing great just you know I didn't give it much thought you know she was having fun but a few days ago I had another event on Tuesday and her parents or her mom is in charge of organizing and they call me in to do the drum circle and she's she's there and this little person is asking if she can drum with me I say yeah sure no problem you know why not she starts to drum and she starts to sing the songs that I taught her two weeks ago. She's like, pio, 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 pito, this and pio. you know, she's going on and she's, and she's singing these songs and I'm going, wow. And, and it hit me in that moment. It was like, some people get it. Some people don't. Some people want to get it. Some people won't. And I was thinking that's powerful. This particular human being was connected and and felt the love and the energy. You know, she was like teaching the other people's songs. She was creating her own songs. She goes, can I make up my own songs? You hear? And, you know, some people would shoot her away from the drum. And some people would say, you need to sit down, your mom. But that's not, I didn't do that. You know, I didn't do that because there was something for me to learn there too. There's something for me to learn. And to learn, there's a lot of things to learn. I'm still processing. And going through the, the process of what I I had to learn. But anyhow, it was fun to see her doing that. And, you know, she's like five years old, but she's so ahead of herself. You know, had advanced in her, in her, in her years. She's an old soul in a young body. And that was very evident when I was, you know, drumming with her. And then, you know, her mom called her back. She sat down and we drummed. 
But it's just, it was just interesting how this one little person remembered all and he knew every single word. You know, I can't even get adults to sing. Excuse me. All the words, you know. And here we were jamming along. Earlier today, she's like, she, she asked me, Iggy, why is your belly so big? I said, because I'm birthing love. I said, <laughs> she started laughing. And then she asked me, she goes, she asked me, she goes, um, is this, is this your wife? And I said, this is my wife. Yes. He goes, do you love her? I said, yes, I love her very much. He goes, I know I can tell. And she knows that you love her. <laughs> it's just like, I thought it was really cool. You know, just, it was really neat to see that, that she was doing that. And so, you know, these are the transitions that people are going through. You know, these little people, they don't see life the way we do, the way we used to. You know, our, our world was on hands. And, you know, and it was nice to see, you know, have this little kids playing the drums and messing around with them because they, that, that was like how I grew up on hands, you know. They're able to move and be part of that energy and be part of that flow. And it fascinated me. I'm going, that's kind of what we lack in this, in this society. And you, you know, the interaction, yeah, we play sports, we have fun, we go swimming, blah, blah, blah. But there's not that, that interaction. There's a lot of kids that don't do stuff because they're locked away in their computers they are locked away on their phones. And when I say locked in, they're locked in. You know, there are adults who are locked in. There are adults who have separated themselves from the real world to the, you know, this technologically world, you know, that we live in. And, you know, that world is either going to be good for you or bad for you. But either way, either way. And so I see these transitions, these transitions in people, how they're moving through the transition of life. And I mean, when I mean transition, I mean they actually just physically spiritually, emotionally transitioning into the new evolution of themselves. And sometimes it's so subtle, you don't even see it, but it's there and it's happening. And it's happening right before our eyes, right before our eyes, which is kind of amazing, which is kind of crazy. Those are one of the things that, you know, you're just not, you, it kind of surprises you and you kind of go like, wow, that was pretty deep. But you mostly see these kind of transitions in children. You know, the children from the past, the children of today, they're different. My, my grandkids are much different than other kids that I've met. And, and so are their friends. They learn systems and they try to interact these systems. I was coaching a team the other day. And the kids are been taught systems to, you know, move the ball and transition. But as soon as the play breaks down, they have this this lapse. Like their mind goes into this place like, Oh, what do I do now? I have to get back into that play. And I told him just, you know, just improvise. And I was shocked that these kids didn't know what the word improvise meant. I was like, really? You guys don't know what that means? Improvise means just to kind of make it happen, you know, do something that, you know, you weren't expecting to do. If the play breaks down, create and reset. And that's kind of the hardest thing sometimes when these kids are, you know, trying to create and reset because they didn't realize they were, they were lost to begin with. But when you get them in the minds, and as a coach, you have to be on top of it, and you have to know what helps your team. But you got to know your team too. You got to know their strengths and weaknesses, things that you would say that will motivate another, but not another. But you know, we're we're in the time where we're very <clears throat> connected to our feelings and our emotions. I have noticed that that you know all all men and women are connected to their emotions in a much deeper way than they probably have been in a long time. You know, when we have we have more of a sense of compassion for other people than we probably used to. There's a lot of people who hurt and there's a lot of people who are going through stuff and they feel it. But as our job as healers, our job as practitioners, our jobs as shamans or Reiki practitioners, whatever you want to call yourself, our job is to make sure that we the people are heard. Because, you know, this is one thing that still doesn't change, that people don't listen to other people. They just assume and they think they listen to other people. But no, we have to listen to other people. It's important. Listen to what they're actually saying to you. 
Because if you don't listen to what they're saying, then you're not really catching the story they're trying to tell you. Because the story is people are sharing you the stories of their their transition, their change, and their emotions, their feelings. They're telling you a story about how they're really feeling about themselves and the things around them and the people around them and the situation around them. But we're a little impatient because we live in a society where everything comes fast and quick. Boom, 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 boom. You know, you want an answer? You could get it pretty damn quick now. You don't have to do all the heavy lifting, all the heavy research for it like we used to. We say two clicks and there we are. Even the dialogue, even the words that we use today have changed. You know, what we used to be able to call or say or make fun, we can't even use those words anymore, some of them. I'm not going to repeat them because you kind of know what they are. Because those words shift. It's like all the languages of, of you know, past, present, and future generations have created their own language and created their own transition of those languages moving forward. You know, you look, you read old English and then, my God, it's, you can't even read it. It's just kind of how we are. The language we speak is going to change. The way we communicate is going to change because that's what has to happen. So I'm going to take a break for two seconds here. I want to say, you know, I'm Iggy Garcia here. Iggy Garcia Live here with Insights Radio on Sprecher. And, you know, and we are also on YouTube, Facebook. And, you know, you can subscribe to my YouTube page at Iggy Garcia and look for my channel, which is It's Good to Be Here. And you can sign up to my podcasts and radio shows. And I'm also on Spotify and Apple. So you can check and anywhere that podcasts are free. I will be floating through your feed. So as we move along with our show here, just want to talk a little bit about, you know, tomorrow. Not, yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. It's hard to believe it's Friday. I'll be at New Mystic Nirvana at 7 p.m. drumming there. And then Sunday from 11 to 5, I'll be uh, gathering uh, people over there at the Allen Creek Beach at the gathering of uh, the gathering of thousand drummers. So we'll all be together drumming. So that should be a lot of fun. And so don't miss our drum circles are fun. And then September 10th, we'll be in Hocking Hills at uh, Ash Cave. If you've been to any of those events, you know how powerful they are. So hope to see you then. Hope to, you guys can come to those events. So, you know, here we are doing our best, doing what we need to do. And sometimes we get it right, sometimes we don't. But when we get it right, it feels good. It feels good. So moving along on the show. So any forms of transitions are different, you know. Not so much, I'm not talking about the physical transitions so much because you sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. I'm talking about the spiritual transition of our body transitioning with spirit and moving through this this thing this transitional time and you know for me the whole planet is moving into a new dimensional existence right now that i can't even explain myself but i can feel that it's happening it's like we're merging of worlds we're merging into these different worlds that you know we'd never seen before or we've never been part of but it's happening is it going to be permanent is it something that's going to be forever that i don't know I have no clue. But I do know one thing is that, you know, as we move into this new existence, not everybody's going to be able to come along with us. Not everybody's going to be able to be part of it because that's just how it is. It's just, it's just that way. Not everybody's equipped and are able to move along with the group or with the party. We can, uh, we can encourage them to come with us and be with us. But as we transition into this new existence and this new creation, not everybody's equipped, not everybody's ready, not everybody wants to do it. And they're comfortable in the energy that they are in, in the energy they've created. So the key is to make sure that you are moving into the direction you want to move into. If it's something you want to, but if it's not something you want to, then you shouldn't do it. But regardless, you know, this is where we're at. This is what's happening. You know, we're being tested every day. We're being tested to see how we react or respond to situations. And now, you know, we're, we're being tested with our feelings and spiritual emotions. 
with just things that are on the news, things that are said to us, things that are fed to us by the media. Is the media bad? Not bad, not good, but they're kind of indifferent. They really don't care about you. They just want to give you the news and hopefully you watch their channel and stay a loyal customer. But, you know, like I said, this month's almost over. It's pretty close to the end of the month. So I like I wanted to stop by and just share those thoughts with you. And just kind of give you an idea where I'm at with things. The biggest thing is just honor yourself. You know, give thanks to yourself. Give thanks to those who help you. Give thanks to your creator. Give thanks to whatever you feel that needs you need to give thanks to. Because it's not a bad thing to say thank you. Especially when you're trying to do better. So you go and do what you need to do in this world. Be the best version of yourself. Do what you have to do. And you know, just take time. Take your time. Take your time. And just, as you move into the new evolution, just let it happen in a sense of, of gradualness. But you know, a lot of it's going to, for a lot of us, it's going to hit hard and fast. So you can do it. Just have, faith, just have faith and trust that you're going to be okay. That you're going to be okay. You know, life will test us. People will test us. Situations will test us. And, you know, how we come out of that is going to be a testament of who we are as human beings. It's going to be a testament. And, you know, sometimes we get it right. Sometimes we don't, but regardless, we're there. So I don't have a whole lot more to say tonight about, you know, this topic, but I hope it was able to, you know, kind of get an idea where I was going with it. Because sometimes we need to talk about, you know, how life is transitioning and changing. Even in the subtlenessness of ourselves, you know, we're changing and we're adapting. But anyways... I want to say thanks to everybody for tuning in tonight with me. And I want to see you guys next week here on my show. I want to see you in my drum circles. Hopefully you're able to come. Just stay connected. Be good to each other. Love one another. You know, it's good to be here. It's a good words to say when you're not feeling well. All right, my friends. You have a beautiful, beautiful evening. And I will see you guys next time. Matakuyasin. Ho'oponopono, okay? Irisikwi, what is above is below. Give thanks to the things that we need to give thanks to because they're always watching over us. Our ancestors are with us. All right, take care, and I will see you next time on IGRC Alive as we cover more topics. Uh, some things are strange, some things are not. Regardless, we're covering topics and we're sharing, and that's what's important. You guys take care of yourself, and I will see you next time on Iggy Garcia Live. Have a great rest of the week. Stay cool, because I know it's kind of warm. All right.